Sonable just released an updated version of their flagship AI compressor, Smart Comp. So, what's new in Smart Comp 2? And how have Sonable made Smart Comp even better? I'd have a lean session prepared to demonstrate a new plugin like this, but as it stands, I've already been working on this mix prior to getting my hands on Smart Comp 2, so the vocal, the kick, and all the other instruments are already compressed to my liking. However, this presents an opportunity to highlight one of my favorite features in Smart Comp 2, which we'll look at later in the video. But first, what's new? wider range of AI learning presets to help you choose the best profile for your audio, expanded number of plug-in states, mid-side processing mode, updated sidechain EQ, intelligent auto release, sound shaping tools, input signal riding to help the signal stay in the compressor sweet spot, spectral and channel linking unlinking options, customizable transform function with freeform controls and additional style presets, RMS level histogram and built-in gate and upward compression functionality. That's quite a lot of features to unpack there. So let's have a look at them. Okay, so this is Smart Comp 2. For those not familiar, this is what the original looked like. Smart Comp 2 retains all of the original stuff. It may be laid out slightly differently. We've still got all of these shaping tools for the attack and the release, the sidechain EQ. They're just laid out slightly differently. Now, the style presets are significantly expanded. So look at that different types of mixes and we've got three different guitars there including a guitar bus vocals lots of options there lots of options for drums for those who are not familiar you press this button it takes 10 seconds to learn and then after it's learnt you can flick through a few different presets and the good thing is is if you want to try out different types of presets you've got these different states it's now expanded from two to eight states if you wanted to try a keys preset out and see how that sounds against say an acoustic preset that type of stuff lots of options there and if you don't like it you can delete it you can of course also save your own presets and they'll appear down here so what else is new we've got mid side mode so we can compress the mids differently to the sides so if we want to compress the sides a bit more than the mids we can do that down below we've got an updated sidechain eq so this is what the compressor hears. We did originally have just filters. Now we've got two extra bands here, which are switchable. We've also got an intelligent auto release. I'm just gonna play some of the track. So here we go. So the spectral comp here, that just adjusts the sensitivity in a similar way to what this did in the original version. What's new though is this clean and dirty. What I have been able to figure out is that the dirty side, as soon as you start adding anything above zero, you're actually getting odd harmonics. Also feels a little bit like the compressor is letting a little bit more of the bite of instruments through, like it's letting more of the attack through. And because it's adding in those odd harmonics, it's also adding a bit more level, uh, which may be desirable or it may not be desirable. I quite like it. We've also got this new color dial here, dark and bright. You can probably guess what that is. On a technical level, what it's doing is it's a bit of a tilt EQ. It's making the compressor more or less sensitive to the high and low end so you'll see it in this display here Baby, slow down and listen now. so there it's not compressing the high end as much um, it's more focused on the low end and that therefore allows the high end to be brighter because it's louder opposite to that is the dark Baby, slow It 
actually works quite well as an offset to this style control. The other new feature is the input writing, which as it says there, the input writer will try to keep your input signal at a relatively constant level. I've tried it out. I still haven't found the right settings for certain things, but this mix, as I said, was pretty much dialed into how I liked it to be compression wise. So there wasn't a lot for it to do. My guess is that the input writing would be really good on a super dynamic vocal. As it is, my vocal has had some extensive processing to really keep it within a certain range. It wasn't really a candidate for that and nothing else in the mix is. But yeah, it's something that I'm still exploring. So the input monitoring is not for everything. I would say that you can get into some trouble with this. So I'd keep the speed pretty low and maybe the intensity quite low as well. You only want it to gently keep things within that sweet spot. And we love dynamics, so we also don't want to change the mix too much. But it is a very nice feature to have. The other thing we've got is the channel link. So when we're in stereo, not mid-side mode, we've got this ability to unlink the channels so that we can compress the left and the right separately or a percentage of each is linked or we can just link them completely. The other new control is the spectral link. Now this confused me quite a bit and basically what it is doing, after reading the manual, what I understood this to mean is that when you start doing things like adjusting these controls here, these adjust where the compressor is compressing. Now with the spectral link at zero, these act as a full range compressor outside of this range. So what this does is when it's set at 100, it ignores this bit here and that bit there. And I think it defaults to that too. So when you bring it down to zero, it turns uh, these bands into full bandwidth. So they, they all act and compress the same amount, whereas these will be more sensitive to different frequencies. And because it's got 2000 bands, it's going to process certain frequencies a different amount. So that's what that does. Um, I'm not sure what you would use it for. I would love to hear what your suggestions are for using that in the comments below, but I'm sure I'll come across some scenario where that will be ideal. So what we've got is these new style presets um, for the compressor squeeze mid okay so it's upward compressing under the threshold parallel compressor does the same thing so it's basically meant to mimic the effects of what you would get if you had say a parallel of the mix i'm going to hit play here hopefully it doesn't blow my head off adding quite a lot of loudness there. If that's what you want, then you've definitely got it there. I've also got a noise gate preset. It's definitely a nice sounding gate. I'm not sure what to do with these shapes, but you can make it whatever you want. And the options that you've got are pretty limitless, I would say, depending on what you want. But uh, thing to note is that this is the threshold and uh, whatever happens under the threshold uh, you're basically going to be turning the signal up or down. You are able to change the shape under the threshold. That is pretty cool. Over here, you can see the histogram. So this is an RMS level histogram it's called and it's showing where the majority of the energy is in whatever it is that you're compressing. We didn't hear much of a change there but that's because we've still got this uh, auto makeup gain. So even though I'm changing the threshold it's automatically adjusting that and you can hear that in real time which is great. Yeah so there are all the new features. The one that I'm excited about and it was pretty cool in the old plugin with the ducking feature but I wanted to highlight how cool this is now because we've got these style controls down here. I like to set up auto mixing scenarios using side chains. So one of the things I do is I'll set up something like a vocal side chain and I'll send that out to any competing instruments. Now the beauty of Smart Comp is that it's got 2000 bands. It's a 2000 band compressor, multi-band compressor essentially. If you're sending say the vocal in, all of those frequencies in the vocal, they're going to be 
the ones that the compressor that you put on another instrument is reacting to if you're using the external side chain. So what I'm trying to achieve here is I'm trying to make sure that these other competing instruments, they can still blossom and be full bandwidth until the vocal comes in. Do you wanna be my baby? What you're listening for there is the guitar, uh, when it's not underneath the vocal, it should be how it should sound, like it's not being compressed or changed tonally at all until the vocal comes in. Try to focus on the guitar and its tonality. I'll bypass this now. Do you want to be my baby? Because it's going to be more than just a one night rendezvous. So that one night rendezvous. Don't one night rendezvous. To me, that felt like the guitar competes just a little bit too much with the voice. With the compressor on. Don't one night rendezvous. Probably even compress it a little less. Don't want what Smart Comp 2 allows you to do is set up these relationships where when you want something to get out of the way of another instrument, it's already going to do it, but it also enables you to color it in a way that makes sense for that instrument. And the guitar is quite bright, so having this color control here and darkening it up every time the vocal comes in, it's just a brilliant control for getting these kind of real subtle auto mixing scenarios in where you've got things being moved out of the way of other important elements. That's how I like to set it up. Otherwise, I would be doing something like this. This is what I originally had and it's full bandwidth. And because it's full bandwidth, it basically ends up just ducking the whole signal, which is not necessarily what I want. Don't want that Having it get a little bit darker there just gets it a little bit further out of the way. So that is by far one of my favorite features. I've used it on the keys in a very similar way. Like I've got it on the chamber reverb, sending the, the voice into there. And so it's going to analyze the voice and take some of the clashing frequencies out of the reverb. If you're after a really versatile compressor, I highly recommend that you check this out, go and download the demo. Beginners also, you're going to find that you're going to be able to just get up to speed very quickly with dialing in settings using the AI functionality, which I haven't spoken about a lot in this video. But yeah, it's, it's always there in the background and it's getting so much better. Go and check it out. Everything that Sonable comes out with is really impressive and I cannot wait to see what else they come out with next. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Happy mixing. Oh,